part of that is because what you have is right as you come off the steep beach, the transport is exceptionally strong, comes exceptionally strong off here, but it can't pick up any sand from the steep beach. It only starts to pick up sand across the flat and any vegetation in this region, wind is still limited. The wind has not reached its maximum sand comp, that carrying ability. As a result, it's still eroding and it goes right through the vegetation and simply abrades it away. Whereas in the wide sections of the island, sand and the wind come off that, it's picking up sand, it's already saturated by the time it reaches here, so any vegetation slows the wind down, drops sand out, and dunes build almost immediately. When she put the vegetation plots in this region, they started to accrete. You just go down 700 meters, and the vegetation could not recover. So here's the thing, you can't simply go ahead and revegetate. But the, yeah, the, if you were managing a national park, they said, well, these breach sites, these overwash sites are our most problematic. We don't want our island overwashing. We don't want our island breaching because it breaks the road. Because if you remember, that's where they put the parking lots. That's where they put the bathrooms. That's where they put the visitor facility because they didn't want to wreck the dunes. These were getting wiped out. They said, we have to revegetate. My argument is, that's not where you should revegetate. These washover environments are always going to be washover environments. Almost a year to two years after that storm, a 25 mile an hour wind off the Gulf would still flood that area. But that flooding event, which was a real problem for the park because all the visitors would get upset because they would be trapped down at Fort Pickens, is the only mechanism by which you get fresh sand. And that fresh sand provides these, essentially like a tidal flood environment, but also when it dries, it can provide sand to the dunes. 